So what I have here is our final results. Let's watch the difference. Ta -da -da. Just open this, and we press play. On the right, our ragdoll rig markers with final results. On the left, our original mocap. Let's press play. Notice the arms. Notice how contained, heavy they look. Screen right. Focus on the chest, the amount of rotation. Alright, now let's check our final settings. There are two more pieces of, uh, of information, tips that I want to share with you here. If we go here and get our channel box and select from Ragdoll or Manipulator, let's just check this one. This marker. What you can see here is what we have rotate stiffness up to 0 0.025. That is so low. This value that I'm showing here is just to show you that when you're going at this refining stage to get the results that you want, you can go and just tinker with smaller values like this. Okay. One more thing that I want to show here is this rest shape that we have. The, uh, the hand marker that we have and that will, here in, uh, for Ragdoll Rig we have it as one marker what I did here is add or increase um, sorry to keep that rotate dampering to 1 and get my rotate stiffness to 0 0.01 okay even lower than for example our uh, chest markers why did I do that here why did I keep rotate stiffness to 0 0.01 for this controller or this um, this part of the mocap, I really didn't have much motion going on on the rest, okay? And a part of showing that this is a really huge character is to contain and to decrease motion in certain body parts, but to add that subtle overlap in other parts, okay? Or in other parts. One of those is the wrist. The mocap that I had had no motion on this wrist control okay now what I needed to add here is that simple overlap the way to add that is again to get that, that looseness and to get that we lower our rotate stiffness if you remember but instead of trying to increase my rotate dampening that won't help rotate dampening gives me more slow out and slow in in this case I want more motion so I did that by again lowering that value for rotate stiffness but I did one more thing if you notice here in density, I added this and I increased this to 2. Increase this to 2. What is density? This is the attribute you can, that tells Ragdoll how heavy you want Ragdoll to simulate that marker. So this is the attribute where you actually add weight. Throughout this tutorial we worked with rotate stiffness and dampening, but if you actually increase that value, you're adding actual weight to that specific marker. I focused on using rotate stiffness and dampening just to show you how just with those two attributes you can add that sense of weight but if you want to add density to one or two markers you're free to experiment with that and that will be the topic of one of our, our uh, upcoming tutorials in this series but for now I just increased that density to 2 let's see if I just increase that density to 9 what happens Focus on this wrist compared to this one. Let's run our simulation again. Okay. Uh, let's get that. Focus on this one. See what's happening with the lower arm? It is now different, much different from our mocap. If you don't believe me, <laughs> Let's just show our polygons again and see the difference. See how much overlap is happening, is, is happening in our lower arm? That's because we increased that density to 9. So now this really heavy object is attached to your arm which is affecting the whole chain. Okay. Again, very fast change done with just changing one attribute but it's based on understanding what each of those attributes does and how to use them together. 
Let's bring back that to 1, the full value, and rewatch our animation. See that? Okay. So that's what I wanted to show you here. One more piece of, uh, of detail that you need to see is what I did here on this marker. I actually added keyframes on rotate stiffness. Why? Because on frame one, what we have here is this rig is starting in this T pose, all right? And I want, starting on frame two, to get as much or to get closer, much faster to our original mocap. So I keyed that rotate stiffness and I added three keys. We start with rotate stiffness one and by key 61, we, incre we decrease that rotate stiffness to 0 0.075. Then we go to the, our last value, which is re really, really, really low rotate stiffness value on, on, the, uh, on the upper arms here. If I had started with this end value right from frame one, okay, which is something I can do now, if we just break connections and put this value to 0 0.05. That's the one that we had before, right? Just yes, that's the one. So I'll go here and I'll just break my connections. I'll keep that value. Now watch what's happening on this arm at the beginning of our animation. It's taking much longer to get to that first key pose that we want. Okay, so you can key your rotate stiffness, you can key your rotate dampening, but base that on your extremes. Okay, that's my tip to you. Now that we have this, let's check our final attributes, our final values that I have. Here, on the spine, I went for rotate stiffness of 0.13, then increased that to rotate stiffness of 5, rotate stiffness of 7, and, sorry, uh, damping of 7, and before that, rotate damping of 5. Uh, and I added that to the to the neck as well. Okay, rotate stiffness of 0.1, damping of 3. If I just try to crank this way up to show you what would happen, okay, let's just go here and add um, or get this rotate um, stiffness here to 0.01. Okay, now it's really loose and I'll make this density 9 and I'll get that rotate dampening to 1 which is a default on this alright can you see what's happening here? I don't think it's not, it's not that clear because we have those two shaped uh, see that amount of rotation that we that we added to this? let's just again hide our polygons to, so we can see our markers and focus on that that's because we increased our density okay we lowered our stiffness so now ragdoll is not trying to get closer to that mocap and we kept that rotate dampening to one right now let's get back to our what we had before dampening of seven and density of 1. Cool. That's what we have. On the other arm, and that's something I want to show, again, I'm keying that upper arm, okay, because I'm trying to get that closer to our force pose, and I'm having this really specific value here, 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 those are the keys that I have. <laughs> And I'm keeping that rotate dampening, not to 3, but 2.5. Again, another example of how you can really fine-tune those values that you have to get the result that you want. For me, on this arm, I found that this rotate dampening it gave me just enough weight. Okay, Instead of keeping that arm too stiff, I'm having that, in, that value that I'm looking for of slow in and out. All right? And I never touch density on those. I'm experiment with that later, but for now I'm just focused on fixing my or 
improving my exaggerating my spacing okay <laughs> so one more look what I did here no keys but it's stiffness 0.1 and damping of 2 compared to damping of 3 here again because the range of motion on that screen left arm was different so that's how we would work with rotate stiffness, rotate dampening to exaggerate your spacing to get that feeling of weight slower ins and slower outs of a pose and that's how you can um, play with those attributes to exaggerate that feeling of heaviness in a character now that we have our settings our attributes in place there's one more step that we need to go for before we can say this is done we can simply go to ragdoll and go to recode simulation simple that will add our simulation to our actual rig to our actual controls right so after that point you can just use your animation you can export your animation you can if you want to you can go in keyframe again so uh, before we do that I'll just and there's a, a choice I'll just add those um, add this layer that I have here I'll merge it with our base animation layers merge layers bottom selected selected automatic yes and merge we're merging this so we have this base motion layer then we'll go and go to ragdoll go to record simulation of our option just to make sure that all is good playback range Euler from start record the layer we don't need to use selection set initial key and that's all good now we just click record markers and that's what Ragto is doing of course marker Ragto gives us our motion our simulation on a separate layer an anim layer and here we go that's our animation if we press play now you can see that looks great now let's say if we go to this frame and we mute this layer see what's happening because now in black is our final animation so now we can just hide this ragdoll rig and let's see the difference that ragdoll gave us what you see now is our animation without ragdoll changes we have muted this uh, layer that we have okay let's mute it that's our original animation one last time to see it together and at any point in time if we go here and we unmute this layer you see the difference that Ragdoll is adding that's the amount of change that, Rob, that Ragdoll gave us by adjusting those two attributes okay final animation here and there's one more thing that I did to make this look even heavier till now what we did is work with our spacing we never changed the duration of our mocap clip it's around 120 frames and uh, I never changed that I wanted to work with spacing and show you how Ragdoll can help you with that without making any timing adjustments and when I, when I say it, timing now I mean the number of frames you have in a shot so I went ahead and I and I saved this new version after using a Maya tool called Maya Time Warp if you're familiar with that it's here to simply retime a whole animation okay and that's the final animation but instead of having a shot that is 120 I took that ragdoll simulation that we just baked and I scaled that okay so it's now 175 frames let's take a look oh now to me 
that looks a much heavier giant walking around. Mission accomplished. Get yourself a rig, a mock-up clip, play with those, show us what you have, enjoy, have fun, and I'll see you later.